Well, correspondent Mohammed Ali joins us to tell us more about that from Damascus. And for an analysis, Rodney Shakespeare joins us. He's an academic and commentator. Okay, Mohammed Ali, tell us exactly what has happened. Yes, according uh, to uh, an official military source uh, uh, statement uh, yesterday, uh, what happened was that at about 11.37 p.m. Uh, last night, uh, local time in uh, Damascus, uh, the Israeli enemy, and I quote, uh, uh, carried out an attack uh, targeting some Syrian army positions around an area called Al Sfera, which is southeast of the uh, city of uh, Aleppo. Uh, air defenses were able to intercept uh, the enemy missiles and shoot down most of them. This is what came out officially. Uh, we still have uh, no information uh, if there were any casualties. It seems not, since that they were not mentioned by the uh, Syrian army. The foreign ministry did not also comment on the issue yet, but usually in such, uh, uh, when such uh, uh, Israeli attacks happen, uh, the foreign ministry sends letters to the United Nations uh, calling on the international body to shoulder its responsibility in uh, pressuring and forcing Israel to respect international law and the UN Charter and the sovereignty of independent states. Okay, so Rodney Shakespeare, taking a look at this situation. Um, so you have uh, Syria that's been attacked on uh, numerous occasions. You have uh, an area by the name of the Gaza Strip that's choked off from the rest of the world. Uh, you have threats that are being made against another country. You have assassinations that take place on foreign soil. And all of them have one thing in common, and that's Israel. Why is Israel allowed to get away with all of that? Uh, yes. Um, uh, American and Israeli policy in West, West Asia is to smash up any independent state uh, so that there can be no resistance to the expansion uh, of the Zionist entity into the lands of others and the annexation of the lands of uh, uh, others. Uh, we know from General Wesley Clark that American policy is to destroy seven countries, states, in West Asia. And we know what's happened. We know what's happened to um, uh, the attempt to destroy Afghanistan, uh, Iraq, uh, Libya, uh, Syria, and of course they want to destroy Iran. So it's all the same thing. It's Israeli and American policy destroying any sort of independent state which can stand up to the expansion of the Zionist entity, and that's what it's about. Mohamed Ali, I don't know if you maybe uh, mentioned this, but uh, I'm curious as to the uh, route that Israel has to take in order to uh, get uh, either near or fly over uh, Syrian airspace in order to, uh, I guess, target whatever it is that they're targeting in Syria. Uh, can you tell us about that if you can? Yes. Uh, sometimes Israel when it uh, attacks uh, Syria, if we're speaking about uh, surface-to-surface uh, surface missiles, they use the occupied Syrian Golan for this purpose. Uh, uh, in other uh, times, uh, when there is an airstrike, uh, Israeli fighter jets violate either Syrian airspace or even Lebanese airspace, uh, uh, putting in danger even civilian flights uh, over Syria or over Lebanon. Uh, at the end, it's very clear that Israel uh, does not care about civilian lives. It's attacking directly sometimes civilian areas uh, inside Syria. So definitely it's not going to care about civilian lives in airplanes and civilian airplanes and air flights uh, uh, over Syria or Lebanon. So there are uh, multiple violations that Israel carries out when it attacks uh, Syria. And the Syrian foreign ministry makes it clear always that this, such attacks are in direct support of the remaining terrorists inside Syria. Why it says that? Because uh, facts on the ground uh, uh, confirm this issue. Because during the war on Syria, we remember how when terrorists used to occupy parts of the Al Qunaitra area, which is uh, 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 near the uh, uh, occupied Syrian Golan, it used to give direct logistic and military support. Uh, and, and medical care to those terrorists of the Al Nusra front there. So it's not a surprise that uh, Israel is attacking Syria. Israel is an enemy to Syria. Israel wants a weak Syria and it, it wants to undermine the capabilities of the Syrian army in fighting terrorists. It does not want a strong Syria. So it's actually uh, not a surprise that Israel is attacking Syria and any member of the resistance front. 
Okay, and finally, uh, Rodney Shakespeare, um, as, as our correspondent there, Muhammad Ali, mentioned, uh, sometimes Israel actually flies over Lebanese airspace and puts civilian aircraft in danger. But what would happen in the case, and I, I know we're talking hypothetically here, or my question is uh, on a hypothetical uh, um, possibility here, but what would happen if the Syrian, let's say, fighter jet gets downed? Then what? Then you would probably have the wrath of God coming down on countries involved, and they would go after each and every country, perhaps. I mean, is, is, that, is that what we're looking at? Well, well the, the, the risk all the time is a conflagration throughout West Asia. Uh, though if that conflagration ever starts, you, know, you should remember that the, uh, the, um, the puppy dog uh, regimes like uh, Saudi Arabia and UAE, uh, which are backed up by the West because they suppressed any democratic movements. In any conflagration of a general sort, uh, those regimes <coughs> may well be in danger of being toppled or, or, or falling. So um, you look more widely at the, the disgraceful behavior that's going on, and if at one stage, if it blows up, it will blow up uh, to the, uh, against the long-term interests of uh, Israel and the USA, because the tide of history is not with Israel, and it is not with America. The tide of history is with the peoples of the West Asia region. Okay, thank you very much for that. Rodney Shakespeare, academic and commentator. Muhammad Ali, it was a pleasure talking to you, uh, correspondent there from Damascus. And with that, we come to an end of this news review.